guys and gals, Never here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Promises to Keep. That's right, y'all. Version 0.2 is out. I am ready to jump back in. Alrighty, Alarm Chain, you are up. And let's -a go. Let's -a go. Alrighty. <clears throat> I barely have time to realize I forgot to brush my teeth. Though these woods are new and strange, the snowy path I know, for I have walked it miles and miles, with many more to go, with many more to go. Here the road forks, the left path is well trod, scarred by scores of travelers past. Their paw prints seem familiar. At its end lies a ramshackle house, spent, its windows shattered and gaping. Its walls give no comfort, its hearth no heat. The right path is pure, unspoiled, and unstained. It leads further into darkness, to where I cannot know. I shiver, though I feel no chill. What path shall I take, and what difference will it make? Callous and unheeding, my paws lead me to the right. They carry me, as always, ever onward through the night. I turn my head to glimpse once more the path I could not take, but my eyes are veiled by shadow in the swirl of downy flake. There was never a choice. There's no going back. I know this. I stop on the shore of a frozen lake. The path leads onward into its depths. I feel my knees bend and strike the hard earth, lightly cushioned by snow. In the icy crystal surface I see myself, but myself does not see me. I reach out as if to cut my own face, shattering the mirror with a thousand ethereal ripples. And suddenly, I am falling. The water accepts me unconditionally, cold as the memory of winter. As I float near the surface, a shadow passes over me. I see my own face on the other side of the barrier. I look away, afraid to meet my own eyes. I feel a paw reach out, and I instinctually shrink away. Sink away. Down. Down. Suddenly I find myself swaddled in warmth. I blink my eyes open, startled by my unfamiliar surroundings. Ever so slowly, reality starts to coalesce around me. Just another dream. That's all it was. They've been getting worse. I begin to recollect the previous day. Theo, Rofi, Artemis, Ollie, and Hunter. I roll onto my back and place my paws behind my head, stretching slightly. For a few long moments, I sit in silence, listening to my heartbeat steadily in my chest. I'm alive and safe, I think. What time is it? I paw around the den floor, looking for my phone. Eight. On a normal day off, I'd sleep in a bit longer, but... The smell of breakfast wafting in from the kitchen makes my stomach growl. Artemis, or probably Artemis, our resident chef... Then again, I don't think anyone else is going to be up this early. The image of a comfortable, curled-up Rofi crosses my mind. Maybe I'll see him if I get up later. Get up. This is hardly a normal day off. I'm awake, so I might as well go have some breakfast. Anyone else? Okay, we don't have any other paths currently. Okay. Besides... I'm not eager to return to my dreams. I got a few good stretches in before reluctantly leaving my surprisingly comfortable air mattress. First things first, a shower. I unzip my luggage, grabbing a change of clothes and a few toiletries. I pause at the door and take a few slow breaths, bracing myself for the day ahead. Here we go. Social Leo, activate. I head into the living room first and see Theo settled comfortably in front of the fire, drinking coffee. Oh, Leo, good morning. How did you sleep? Uh, morning, Theo. I slept pretty well, actually. Thank you again for setting up the mattress for me. Glad to hear it. You're up earlier than I expected. Right on cue, I stifle a yawn with my paw. You can go back to bed if you want. I think most of the house is still asleep. No, I'm fine. I just need to shake off the morning sleepiness. Speaking of, who is awake right now? Well, I know Artemis threw together a breakfast spread in the kitchen. I think Hunter's with him, Every but everyone else is still in dreamland. If you're in the mood, you should join them for a bite. I'm not normally a breakfast guy, but Artemis made fresh scones that I couldn't refuse. This, that does sound nice, but I do want to freshen up first, if that's alright. Oh, of course! The bathroom is just around the corner. I put some fresh towels in there earlier this morning, so take your pick. He really was prepared for everything. Gotcha. Thanks again, Theo. I wave goodbye, and I make my way to the bathroom. After a refreshing shower, I return to the den, setting my dirty clothes aside and grabbing my phone. Making my way to the kitchen, I start to hear talking and laughing. Definitely Hunter's voice. <clears throat> okay, but why take all the food out? Why take all the joy out of food? 
It's not that bad. I still want. I still eat what I want for like half the year. Seems like I walked in on some kind of discussion. Hey, uh, good morning, you two. They both turned to face me. Morning, Leo. Morning. Help yourself to some breakfast. We have fresh scones, pancakes, and a bunch of fruit. Awesome, I'll go ahead and make a plate. And sorry if I interrupted your conversation. No worries, I'm just trying to explain ma explain macros to old Artie here. I must have picked that nickname up from Rofi, but Artemis doesn't seem annoyed by it. Macros? Macronutrients, you know, like the stuff you put in your body. He basically starves himself for half the year to look good. I do not. The point is, you keep track of what you eat, and so you stay well nourished while minimizing sugar and fat intake. And it's not just for our own benefit. I gotta keep it up to stay on the, gym the gymnastics team. It sounds awful to me. One of the greatest joys of cooking is trial and error. Imagine weighing every spoon of sugar and salt you put in a dish. So, Hunter, do you cook? Well, I'm not feeling the dining hall food. Well, when I'm not feeling the dining hall food... <laughs> He looks at Artemis a bit sheepishly. You're not wrong, though. I usually keep my meals simple, so they're easy to log. Let me guess. Chicken and rice eight days a week. As I listen into their banter, I start to put together a plate of food for myself. A hearty stack of pancakes with fruit, topped off with a homemade scone. I can get used to this. Well, it's easy to prepare, and chicken breast has a really good protein-to-fat ratio. Yeah, and it's also the hardest part of the, ki of the chicken to make tasty. No fat means little to no flavor. Well, Chef, do you have any suggestions to jazz up chicken breast? Isn't it ironic an avian is eating other avian? <laughs> Alright. I mean, they do that in real life, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Well, <clears throat> well, if you're looking to give it some extra flavor and moisture, how about a glaze? I grab a seat and dig in. The pancakes are fluffy and perfectly sweet. I found a great red pepper red pepper paste at the store the other day that's sweet and spicy. I don't think it has a ton of sugar, and I've made some great glazes with it. Hunter pulls out his phone and starts typing. He shows us his search results. This one? We both lean forward. The image of the container has some language I can't read, but Artemis nods. Yeah, but that looks pretty expensive online. I can show you where I get it next time I go ship. Artemis is cut off by a ding. The sound of Hunter's phone authorizing a purchase. Oh, oops, I, I figured I'd just order it now. Uh, all right. Not to tell you what to do, but websites usually jack up the price if you only order one or two things. In the future, you should probably... Another ding from Hunter's phone. Oh, it's not that bad. I ordered a fresh package of chicken, too. Another single item order. Uh, Hunter shrugs it off. I just wanted to put the orders in before I forget. Uh, I don't expect them to arrive anytime soon. He gestures to the windows. I can see the gears turning in Artemis's head as he tries to understand Hunter's nonchalance. His expression remains relatively neutral, though. Eventually, he shakes his head and turns to me. Either way, I'm glad to see some of you enjoying my food. He gives me a snarky nod and as I nibble my scone. Light, buttery, and soft. I give him a thumbs up and continue eating. Hey, I had fruit! You had, like, five strawberries and a protein shake. I had to make up for yesterday. I had too much bread pudding. At that moment, Theo strides into the kitchen, all geared up to head outside. Oh, great! All the early birds are here! He makes eye contact with Artemis, then cringes slightly. Uh, no offense. None taken. I'm heading out to shovel the snow at the front, then I think I'll check a few more folks down the street. Hunter's eyes light up immediately. What help, shoveling? I need something to work off breakfast. Artemis is very pointedly silent. His face says it all. You're in... <clears throat> You're in luck! I have a second shovel you can use! Sweet! Let me get changed real quick! Hunter hops up from his seat, carefully placing his plate in the sink. Thanks again for breakfast, Artie! Yeah, thanks, Artemis. Hmm. The J nods, directing his attention to his phone as Hunter jogs out of the kitchen. As always, please make yourselves at home while we're out. We should be gone for too long. Theo, Theo turns to leave the kitchen. Soon after, I hear Hunter come down the stairs to join him. The door opens, shuts, and then the house is quiet again. I finish the last few bites of my food as Artemis gets up from his seat. If he wants to work off breakfast, he has to actually eat it first. He has no calories to work off right now. There it is. Anyway, you can hand me your plate if you're finished. I'll clean up in a bit. Do you need any help? Nah. 
I promised Brophy a cooking lesson today, so I'll do all the cleaning after that. That sounds fun. Uh, what are you teaching him? I'm not sure. Whatever I can whip up from the stuff in the fridge. A set of paw steps echo in the stairwell. Speak of the devil. Artie, good morning! Rofi calls out as he enters the kitchen. His eyes light up when he sees me at the table. Oh, morning, Leo! Morning, Rofi! Rofi grins at me, then makes his way over to the fridge. What are we cooking today? Artie jo Artemis joins him in front of the fridge, inspecting the available ingredients. I take that as my cue to excuse myself, not wanting to get in their way. I return to the living room and sit on the couch. Seems like Ollie is a late sleeper. I wonder if he's up yet. I get Ollie's number. For, I got. Uh, I get. Blah. I get Ollie's number from our group chat and send him a text. Hey, you up? After a few minutes, I get a response. Uh, barely. Why? I uh, want to hang for a bit if you aren't too sleepy. His response comes instantly. Oh yeah, come upstairs. Ooh. Excuse me. Ollie answers the door on the second knock, still rubbing sleep from his eyes. Morning. Morning, Ollie. Hope I didn't wake you. Nah, nah. He lets out a huge toothy yawn. You're good. Come on in. Who is that? <laughs> the room looks pretty much the same as yesterday, with the notable exception of the finished desktop setup pulsing with an assortment of colors. Looks like you got everything set up. Looking good. Yeah. He yawns again, nodding. Let me boot it up for you. Ollie's desktop background, at least the parts of it visible beneath the clutter of files and folders, looks like some sort of painting. A lone knight kneeling at the foot of a grave, bearing a gilded shield inlaid with seven glittering gemstones. A view is quickly obstructed as the dino begins pulling up windows, filing each, filling each monitor in a matter of seconds. Uh, wait, sorry, can I get a better look at your desktop background? Oh, of course! Ollie's gentle blue eyes light up in excitement. He fiddles with the center monitor and pulls it up unobstructed. Ah, so cute! Do you recognize it? Sorry, no, it just looked interesting. Oh, that's okay. His excitement barely wavers. It seems as if he's just as happy to explain it. It's from an RPG called Tales of Wheel and Woe, uh, one of my all-time favorites. This is a really pivotal scene that happens towards the end, once you've gathered all seven crystals. I won't spoil what happens, but it's a pretty famous twist. The game is known for its fantastic storytelling, which is why it's one of my favorites. I'm a sucker for a story-heavy RP for story-heavy RPGs, anything I can really lose myself in. Huh, I've actually never heard of it. What's the plot about? Vaguely, I mean. Hmm, I'm not sure how much I can describe it without spoiling anything. Its presentation is really masterful, so just hearing about it won't do it justice. The basic setup is simple, though. You play a hero sent on a quest to collect seven magic crystals in order to restore sunlight to a cursed kingdom. It's what they do with such a well-trod premise that makes it a masterpiece, though. It made me laugh, it made me cry, it made me think seriously about life while also helping me take life seriously, like le life less seriously. And it has one of the most complicated and rewarding skill trees I've ever seen. And to be honest, I'd play it just for that. Wow, such high praise, I'm surprised I haven't heard of it before. Ollie shrugs. It's fairly text-heavy and requires a lot of investment to really get into. Not everyone's cup of tea. The story, though? It's just so perfect. God, I really want to talk about it, but... Spoilers. Spoilers. What else can we talk about? Are there any games you've been into recently? Well, I'm actually into story-heavy games myself. Yeah? What kind of stories do you like best, Leo? Uh, what kind of stories with happy endings? This might be a weird answer, but I like sad stories with happy endings. Stories that make me feel a range of emotions, that challenge me to see both the light and the dark side of things. That's not a weird answer at all. It's how I feel, too. The diner's tail swishes lightly behind him, reminiscent of a wag. Stories that don't shrink away from pain and sadness, but don't wallow in it either. I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold-tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye!